we're Linda and Scotty and we're Kiwis by the Coop. We've been nomadic since 2017. We're leaving our caravan and our life behind in New Zealand to travel the world again. Follow us and see where we end up. All right, we're back. As promised in our last YouTube video, we are back with you to talk all about house and pet sitting. And we're still in Oxford at one of our pet sits. I've got my glasses on still. Well, I'm probably going to put mine on too because I can't read your notes. <laughs> <laughs> so let's get into it. <laughs> Good start. All right, all right. Um, yeah, so we're still, as Scotty said, we're still um, house and pet sitting here in Oxford in the UK. Uh, so we thought we'd just chat to you about um, how we have house and pet sat around the world um, during our travels around, particularly Asia. Um, we initially heard about house sitting, house and pet sitting, before our travels. We didn't really know that much about it, but we kind of thought that would be pretty cool, doing a few house and pet sits in between our travels. Uh, it ended up that we enjoyed it so much that we actually travelled in between our house and pet sits. Mm, that'd be a good way to put it, eh? Hmm. Um, and just to be clear, um, it's completely unpaid. Uh, there are forums and pla platforms out there where you can get paid to do house sits. Uh, that puts a completely different spin on it. And in a lot of countries, actually probably most countries overseas, unless you have a working permit, a working visa, um, it, it is illegal. It is, would be illegal, eh? Mm. And it's something we just don't want to get into. No. 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 Okay, so just had a quick check on our first part there to make sure it was okay. So we're back into it again. It's up to you now to talk about. Oh, all right. So um, <laughs> house sitting actually um, enabled us to decide which country that we were going to go to next. So in between those house sits, that then gave us the opportunity to visit countries um, that were close by to the ones that we were already in, ones that we had never planned on going to. It's just that we happened to be accepted for a house sit in that country. For example, we house sat in China. So after that house sit finished, we did some independent travel around China. It was never on the list of mm, countries to go to. And of course, close to China, we hopped over and um, did a tour around, toured around uh, Japan, and we also um, got to see some of Taiwan. Taiwan. So yeah. um, that's how we travelled, and that's how it was determined where we were going to be going next. So I think it's important to remember that with house sitting, you get to go to some cool places. And the other part that I probably like, and Linda likes too, is that you get to go to areas that are probably not the main tourist area either. Like to give you an example, when we're in Bangkok, where we house sit was outside the main tourist area of Bangkok. So we're in an area that not many people spoke English. So it, it could be a challenge, but it was a challenge that we enjoyed. So you get to beat some other people and try and understand a bit about them through the language barrier and that. And we got to eat some cool street food because it was for the locals and not for the tourists. So that just gives you an idea, and that's probably one of the big pluses of house sitting um, around the world, and especially in Asia. Mm. And I've got a list of the places. That's why I put my glasses the country, on. The countries that we did visit. So here is a short overview of where we have house sat over the last six years. So not in any particular order whatsoever. So we've got New Zealand, 12 sits. UK, which we've just firstly come to, two. Italy, one. France, one. Nepal, one. That was cool, that one. Mm. Thailand, seven. South Korea, one. Vietnam, two. Singapore, four. Malaysia, three. And China, one. So that's, that's been quite a good list, and most of those were on our two years when we travelled around last time, eh? Yeah. So like I said, UK, we're just back into it now, and we're about to do a second one very soon. Yeah. So the next thing we want to move on to is um, why do we use websites? Uh, we belong to two uh, house sitting websites and they are trustedhousesitters.com and kiwihousesitters.co.nz for the more local, um, obviously, house sits in New Zealand. 
Um, so uh, the websites, yep, you've got to pay to join. So uh, you can be either a house and pet sitter or you can be a pet parent, they call them, or the homeowner. So uh, you can join up and you can even join as a combined. So some um, pet parents do do house and pet sitting as well. So you can have a combined membership. Um, on, we're mainly going to be talking about trusted house sitters um, at the moment because that is the one that we use for our international house sits. So we'll just concentrate on that, but they, there are some similarities between the two websites. Um, so in trusted house sitters, you now have three tiers of membership for house sitters. We're just on the very, very basic plan and it goes up from there. I'm not going to go into the prices because you might be looking at this in a year's time and the prices are different from what I quoted. So um, I'll be putting uh, the website in the link in the description below so that you can do your own research. Um, and so yeah, there are, there are a lot of things on offer. Um, Shall I go and make a coffee? No. Oh, okay. Um, <clears throat> Sorry, I threw you a bit. <laughs> Where was I up to? <laughs> Hey, Trusted House Sitters is one of the main ones we use all the time, especially overseas. They have safety nets in place, should anything unfortunately go wrong. They have a 24-7 line for vet assistance and also an urgent advice line if you need it. Also, they go through police checks. There's also reviews for the pet sister and the homeowners of reviews of the past house sits that have happened. And like for us, there's a lot more into it and a lot of it's on the website but we're there to help as much as possible as well. Now, we've been using Trusted House Sitters for a few years now. Linda's become a bit more of an expert on it, definitely more than me. But if there's anything you need help with, please just leave um, a question in the comment, come back to us, or through our other social media, just message us and we'll be there to help as much as possible. Hmm. So um, just a couple of really important things before you apply for any house sits, especially overseas, is that make sure that you are available um, for the date stated in the sit advertised before you apply for it. Um, also make sure that you do your research, that you are able to get to that destination. On the, um, the ads that come up, the the house sits that come up, they will put down now whether you, they are accessible by public transport. Research before you apply if you are confident in getting there. It's not so bad if you've got your own transport, but if you have to rely on public transport, make sure that you can get there. Also to check the um, whether you require any visas to go to the country that you want to visit. Uh, for instance, there was quite a palaver for us to get to China. The homeowner had to act as per personal um, reference, but she was quite um, rehearsed in doing all of that for previous house sitters. So make sure you do that research and that you can stay in that country um, long enough to be able to do the sit because some house sits are quite long. Mm. So um, yeah, we didn't want to get into too much detail, but just let you know how we do it, how we go about it, how it's been successful for us, and um, we, we really enjoy it. And oh, it is it. based on 100% trust. They are trusting you to look after their most prized possession, and that is their pet first and their home second. So um, there is a great deal of responsibility that comes with it. And there's a couple of things that we do that I don't know if everyone does and one thing we try and make sure is we've got a bit of leeway so we always make a travel probably for the next day. Give you an example, if the people are arriving back at 11 o'clock, we're not gone at 12 o'clock or 11.30 close. We like to do a handover, let the homeowner know if anything's happened and it could be around the house or with the pet, talk to them about that and if by chance they get stopped through um, delays and air travel or anything like that, they're not panicking to get back because the pets are at home by themselves. So we try and put a bit of a leeway, especially we'll look at leaving the next day if mm. we can. Mm. And that may be staying with them or um, getting alternative accommodation close by so we're there if something does go wrong. And that's, I think, a lot of homeowners seem to really enjoy that there's a backup there just in case something happens. Mm. Hey. Yep. So uh, I'll leave the link in the description below for both websites and I'll also leave you a couple of discount codes so that if you do want to join either Trusted House Sitters or Kiwi House Sitters, 
Use the uh, code in the description below and um, you'll get a discount. Hmm, and it works both ways. Yes. So it's beneficial for both of us, which is quite cool. I yep. like those ones. Yeah. Hey. And yeah, as Scotty said before, if you've got any questions, any, um, put them in the comments below and we'll try and help out. Yeah, no worries. So, thank you. And don't forget, subscribe so at least we know, especially the other day when Linda was doing a video editing after about four or five hours trying to remember how to do it all, <laughs> at least she knows she got a couple of new likes out of it, so yeah. it kind of makes it all worthwhile. Give us a thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys. All right. Have a good one. See you Cheers. next time. Bye. Okay, with country house sit country house sitters, trusted house sitters. Do you want to start that one again? I should start that one again. <laughs> yeah, just